Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's meeting. <clears throat> once we get the, the once we start the meeting, I'd ask that the public not uh, come into the council floor. There's been other instances where people like to go around, and I'd ask that you please don't. There is a rule in the municipal code that does does not permit that. <coughs> Before we start the meeting, I'd like to read today's quote by our city clerk, Madam Sue Richards. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. I'll call the 20th regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Groff? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? 16 present. Quorum's present. I'd ask Mr. Joe Blindauer, Scoutmaster, and his troop to lead us in reciting our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Brendauer. Oh, here we go. Next item on the agenda, approval of the minutes. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we approve the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting in the same stand approved as entered on the record. Second. There's a motion to second to approve the minutes under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Mayor's appointments. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. As stated uh, today's date to the honorable members of the Common Council. Pursuant to the requirements of Section 7.30 of the Wisconsin Statutes, I herewith submit for your approval the list of nominations for election inspectors for all elections in 2006. The aforementioned section of the law stipulates the manner in which election officials shall be chosen, and I tender my appointments as follows to retain as much seniority and experiences as possible while complying with the state law. Respectfully submitted, Juan Perez, Mayor. And attached, I believe all the aldermen have, oh, I guess the uh, aldermen have. haven't gotten copies of this, but there's a laundry list, a long list of uh, poll workers that the mayor is appointing as, uh, as election workers. And these appointments are pursuant to Madam City Clerk Sue Richards' recommendations. She picked them all based on her experiences with all the poll workers, and that will lie over. And I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. The Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee, uh, Mayor Perez, Richard Gebhardt, a representative of the village of Kohler, and the Municipal Judge and Municipal Court Clerk, both uh, ex officio non-voting members for terms um, expiring 4-30-06, signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Attorney Lee. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. There's, there's a motion and a second under discussion. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. And Sue Dennis to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Francia Barnard, whose term expires 43007, signed by the mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. And this appointment, again, is an appointment that is made by the school district. The school district is a The school district is entitled uh, to one representative uh, of the school district, and it generally is a superintendent of schools or his or her designee. And in this case, this is the appointment that the superintendent recommended. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
The appointment is confirmed. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Okay, first on the public forum will be Jeff Shuko. Jeff, if you could come up to the mic and give me your home address, please. My name is Jeff Shuko, and I'm at 23 South 17th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I uh, want to uh, address the council and citizens and the mayor in regards to bringing in the USS Edson to Sheboygan and also in regard to some comments that were made on local radio stations, WHBL, The Beacon, and the Sheboygan Press. Uh, the draft of the ship, from what I understand now, will not be too deep for our harbor, and if some dredging is required, it will not be at the city's expense. In fact, from what I've heard, there will be no expense to the city at all, which I view as a, good, as a very good thing. A win-win situation for the city, whose taxpayers have a substantial investment in Blue Harbor, Concerns were raised about restricted areas and narrow passageways being too hazardous. And uh, to anyone who hasn't toured the sub Kobe on Manitowoc, which is very popular to this day, submarines are the most uh, tight quartered vessels in the Navy. In comparison, a destroyer is spacious. Concerns raised about navigation and fog have been addressed and solved even for someone navigating blind into the harbor. As a former Coast Guard Auxiliary member, I would endorse having a bow diverter to prevent head-on collisions in fog. Maintenance is provided for, and this ship just came out of dry dock, which means it is in pristine condition. In fresh water, a 20-year hull integrity is not overly optimistic. In conclusion, we need to develop our tourism at our lakefront, and I believe it'd be uh, wise for the council to go ahead with this project insofar as that uh, from what I heard at a committee meeting earlier this evening, we'd like more information on this project. And by voting for it tonight, you're not giving a green light go ahead to the whole thing. What we're doing is allowing the people that are looking into this for us to get more information for us. Uh, secondly, this evening, I gave some, I, I handed out some pass outs for a degradation permit to all the common council members, the mayor and the city attorney which is in regard to some bird problems that we're having in the, at the lakefront at Deland Park and also where the kids are playing football at Kiwanis Park. And uh, that information is I've received directly from ben, ben Nelson of the USDA. And what that's just to let everyone know is that since I had offered to do this for free for the city, now I've got to stick to my promise. <laughs> so we're going to work out, uh, uh, with your permission, we'll work out... Uh, uh, some non-lethal tactics that we can employ to rid the city of these uh, birds where they're uh, in problem areas right now. And I, from what I understand, it is getting to be quite a mess. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Next on the list would be Jim Van Akron. Mr. Van Akron, could I have your home address, please? 432 Lincoln Avenue. Lincoln Avenue? Yes. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Perez and council members for this opportunity to speak. Uh, I come to you tonight to speak about the library board. I wish to make clear I'm not here to criticize your concerns about Sharon Winkle's con contract. I want to talk to you about your relationship with the library board. As some of you know, my wife Cindy is a board member. I watched with interest your deliberations almost two weeks ago. I was struck by the lack of communication between you and the library board. I think it is important for you to know, and for those who have worked with library board members and their families in the past, be reminded of who these individuals are on the library board. The six board members you asked to resign have at least 36 years of experience as volunteers to the library. But they have contributed to the community far beyond this. Many are lifelong residents of this community. All are long-term residents. Besides volunteering to serve on the library board, these people and their families have worked literally side by side with, many, with you in many community activities. They have worked in our schools, through our PTO, the Sheboygan Public Education Foundation, and other school voluntary activities. They are volunteers at the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, the Literacy Council, Altrusa, the Boys and Girls Club, Meals on Wheels, the Sheboygan Theater Company, the Sheboygan Concert Association, Theater for Young Audience, 
Maywood, and the Salvation Army. They are active in their churches, serving the needy and shut-ins in our community. In short, they are part of the moral, ethical, and cultural backbone of our community. As with you, they see community and public service as the honorable and right thing to do. Simply speaking, these people help make Sheboygan a better place to live by their volunteer activities. I don't know how many of you were struck, as I was, by the irony found in the edition of the Sheboygan Press the day your action calling for the resignation of the six library members was reported. In that same edition, a press editorial called for community volunteerism. Mayor Perez began the last meeting on January 3rd with this quote, if one looks for the best, one finds it. If one seeks the worst, this becomes reality. These six individuals you have asked to resign are some of the best Sheboygan has to offer. You would do well to rescind your action calling for their resignation and begin a dialogue with the library board to work cooperatively for the betterment of our community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next on the list would be Ernest M. Kepler. Mr. Kepler, could you give me your home address, please? Yes, uh, 2533 Lakeshore Drive. And you will uh, have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm not here to debate, Jim. Unfortunately, I have a different view. I am here tonight as president of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance. On Tuesday, December 27, 2005, our organization made a formal presentation to Mayor Perez regarding the alleged legal contract for the Mead Public Library director, which was approved by a six to four vote by the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees. We are all aware the issue was brought to this Common Council on January 3, 2006, and that the Council passed a resolution asking for the resignation of the six library trustees who voted in favor of granting the contract submitted by the Mead Public Library Director. Furthermore, there was a news conference held last week, Thursday, January 12, 2006, in this very chamber by the Mayor and the Library Director. The news conference did not address the issue of voluntary resignations or ultimate dismissal of the six Mead Public Library Board of Trustees who voted in favor of said contract. The conference did not sway public opinion. The Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, the news media, and the citizens of Sheboygan requiring you, the Common Council, to take appropriate action to remove library board trustees from office that have acted inappropriately. This issue will not go away. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And last on the list would be Carter Paulus. Carter, could you give me your home address, please? Yes, 414 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. And thank you, Your Honor, for the opportunity to speak tonight. January 12th's events at City Hall, while enlightening, have not solved the initial problem of accountability and fiscal responsibility of the, liber of the library trustees. As a friend said, it doesn't pass the smell test. The day's events only showed the fiscally irresponsible at the library just blinked first. To open up an alleged illegal contract pursuant to state statute does not correct the issue. What part of the word illegal does anyone not understand? And why, after a month, do we not have a definitive answer from our city attorney? What are we paying him almost $90,000 a year for? Are there any other questions? One, decades of apparent legally incorrect appointments of library trustees leading to invalid decisions. Two. 
questions of legally required visits of finance by the library trustees. Three, questions of legal financial reporting by the library trustees. Four, questions of legal reporting to and through the city clerk by the library trustees. Five, questions of the library trustees not seeing to it the finance director's office actually sees, verifies, approves, and pays the bills called for in law. If there were a prosecutor and or grand jury assembling this information, the litany of potential charges might grow more. The accountability of this entire issue with the library trustees will not go away until the citizens are being served properly. The windstorm of suspicion is running wild. And with a fresh start, the bright sunshine of truth and clarity of purpose can take over completely. The Common Council has taken only the first step in asking for resignations. With 25 candidates running for office, the largest ever, dissatisfaction of performance by most in this government is reaching new highs. We're sick and tired of gutless responses. It is time for another house cleaning, and you can start with the library trustee board. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> Catch my breath there a little bit. <laughs> on another note, we're going to move on. I'd like to inform the council and the public of a couple of initiatives that I am bringing forth. One is the Clean City in Initiative. Uh, the Sheboygan Press got a little bit ahead of me Saturday and um, uh, announced that I was going to unveil a, a plan. Well, I'm not prepared yet to unveil the plan, but I am prepared to tell you what we're looking into. And what we're looking into is trying to address the problem of garbage that keeps popping up in our main corridors and in other areas of our community. And it's become a problem that to the point where more and more people are calling my office and I believe more and more people are calling the, the older persons and voicing their concerns. So it's a it's at a point now where we need to take a look at this problem and deal with it head on. And by all means, I intend to do that. One of the steps that we're going to take first is to anal analyze the existing ordinance that's in effect that we have been enforcing. I believe the ordinance needs to be looked at a little bit carefully to see if there's other things that we can do in conjunction with the ordinance. And the approach that we'll be taking is uh, formulating and enforcing more of an um, internal policy than an ordinance and do it in, in conjunction with that ordinance that, in, that is in existence. The people who will be involved, of course, is the mayor's office, inspections, and public works department, and I believe in some instances, uh, as we discussed this morning during my staff meeting, uh, the police department and the fire department. I also have been assured by some members of the uh, uh, Landlords Association that I have their support and they believe in the same things we believe in and that is to keep our city clean and so that people can enjoy uh, the, their homes and, and their neighborhoods. It's a, it's, an, it, it's a problem I think that it's going to make a lot of people upset with me. I understand that. When I became mayor eight and a half uh, months ago, you believe I was going to say eight and a half, nine years ago, months ago. It feels that way sometimes. Doesn't it? <laughs> when I became mayor, I was I was keenly aware. I was keenly aware that my critics, my political enemies, and sometimes the chronic complainers were going to come after me and scrutinize everything I did. And I tell you what, I expect that because that keeps me strong. It keeps me online and it keeps me up on top of things. So. When I come up with this plan and introduce it to the council for, for their review, it may not be necessarily for your approval, but so that you can be apprised of it, I hope that I have your support because you will have people that are going to be calling you 
and telling you the city is being unfair and they're sending me a $500 bill or a $600 bill all for just one couch that I had on the curb or one couch I had next to my door. But the policy is going to be implemented and put together is going to be very clear, very specific, very procedural, and Pete, there's not going to be any room for somebody to misunderstand that. Along with that, there's going to be a, either a 60-day or a 90-day grace period. We will let the public know via the paper, the radio, and however else we are able to, perhaps the, uh, our website, and let people know this is a policy, this is what's expected of you, and in three months, if you haven't cleaned up your act, we're going to implement it. And I think most of the public will support us in, in that effort. So I ask for, for your support also. What we've done since Friday is the complaint form for anyone who would like to file a complaint against a neighbor that has garbage or someone that has garbage in their yard has been there for a long time. They are able to access that complaint form on our website if they hit the inspections department. So that, that form is available now, okay? Moving along with the city, with the county city cost savings initiative. This is a, again, an, a, an effort to bring together the counterparts and the city and the county. And we're also thinking of inviting Kohler, Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls so that they can meet together. And we're, we're thinking of doing it in, in the form of a, a forum where they can meet together for several hours, just their counterparts and talk about what it is that they exactly do every day. Talk about efficiency, cost effectiveness, talk about job titles, job responsibilities. <coughs> what is it that they do every day that benefits us, the taxpayers, but that perhaps we could be doing a little bit different and look for opportunity to improve that service and perhaps save money to the taxpayer. And that's the whole thrust behind this county city uh, initiative. It takes shared services a little further. Now one of the things we're gonna find out is that we're already doing a lot of sharing of services and a lot of sharing of the costs. We're going to find that out. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident of that. But when I shared it with our staff meeting today, I, I also understood that there's some areas that are already being worked on that weren't being worked on before that perhaps now this might create a little bit more of an impetus to, to get it going in that direction. And I really believe we're going to find areas, little pockets in, in what we do that perhaps we should be zeroing in and, and looking at it a little bit closer to see if we can save the taxpayer money. So again, I'd ask for, for your support, and you will probably hear a little bit about this in the, in, the, in the community. And if there's any questions, just direct them to my office, or if you feel comfortable in answering the questions, please do. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is we have four hearings. Number one, for the proposed assessments for resurfacing of High Avenue from South 7th Street to South 12th Street. Second, being for the proposed assessments for resurfacing of New Jersey Avenue from South 15th to the railroad. And the third one, for the proposed assessments for resurfacing of Union Avenue from South 11th Street to South Business Drive. And the fourth one, for the proposed assessments for repaving of North 8th Street from Michigan Avenue to Ontario Avenue. There are four separate hearings on resurfacing and paving streets. Is there anyone that would like to address the council on any specific hearing? Either be one, two, or three, or four. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Madam, please. And would you please tell us which one you're refer you, you will be addressing us? Hi, good evening. Thank you, you Mayor and uh, fellow councilmen and elder women and aldermen. I'm referencing actually two of them. Could you please, excuse me, could you give me your name, please? Sure. My name is Miriam Schnur. Miriam? It's M-I-R-I-A-M. S-C-H-N-U-R? That's correct. And your address, Miriam? It's 4417 Lafayette Drive. And which two are you looking at? I'm looking at number two, and I'm also looking at number three. Okay, thank you. My purpose of just coming here is I did get informed. I did call some, uh, some of the staff members here from the city, and I do understand that we do have to pay what's, what we really owe to. If we have to pay for our curbs and, and our streets to maintain 
I, I own some of these properties that, that are um, in this area. The one thing that just does concern me is the, is the amount. Um, I don't mind paying my taxes. I do know what it goes for. I was informed that most of our taxes go for like plowing, staff, um, anything that really the city runs off of. And I completely understand that. My point is, is when we have a section of our lot in front of it and you're measuring it off and I don't have the sheet in front of me, excuse me, but I believe it's like $40 per square foot. A lot of that with the curbs, when we do a lot of snow plowing, it does get a little bit damaged. The one in particular I'm really looking at is New Jersey Avenue, for example. A lot of heavy traffic goes on there. There we have the malt factory in front and we have probably about two, three blocks full of good, uh, good amount of residential. If, if you ever sit out there, which I did on several occasions, there's a lot of heavy trucks that go down there from the city. There's a lot of heavy equipment that goes down there all constantly. My point is, is that I don't mind paying for it, but I guess on the scope of, it's a very busy street. It's not your regular street of like Clara Avenue. It's not your regular street of, I don't know, Kentucky. I used to live on Kentucky Avenue. We had no really huge significant traffic. The other one that I'm addressing here is Union Avenue. They're two very busy streets. Granted, I'm gonna admit my, my property levels, I mean, the, the amount that it could probably be worth is not a whole lot because it's on a really busy street. And then I look at my taxes. Not bad, I'm not gonna complain. But then I look at this. Well, it's a little hard to swallow when you look at your taxes, how much you really, you know, how much your property's worth. I guess maybe I just wanna know why it's not really maybe divided out. I, I mean, amongst a lot of people. We all use these roads. They're very busy, heavy traffic roads. And I guess that's really the only question I do have is, could we split it up a little bit more? Is there any other options? I did see three options on there. You could have it rolled onto your tax bill, you could make payments, or you could make it in one lump sum. And I guess I just maybe want to be a little bit more informed, that's why I came tonight. Thank you. Tom, is there anything you would like? Do you need to address now, or can we address that later? It's up to you. I'd like to say that the city already picks up half the cost of the resurfacing and reconstruction. The property on one side pays for one fourth, and across the street pays for one fourth, and the city pays for half. So half the costs are being uh, spread out to the rest of the city. To take into consideration that the traffic on the streets. Uh, well then, if something's done new for the first time, that's 100% property owner cost. After that, for any maintenance, resurfacing, or reconstruction, it's split 50-50 with the property owners in the city. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Please tell us, tell us which one you're addressing. 1616 Bell Avenue. Uh, Okay. In which hearing are you? I don't have a hearing. Oh. I'm just about the streets. I heard about the streets. No, this is we're, we're having four hearings that are being resurfaced. There's a specific yeah. address. Yeah, that's the problem I'm having over there. Pardon me? That's the problem I'm having over there. I called the city development and had them come over and check out the streets. Okay, hold on. We... Is Tom, is this part of the, what is your address again on Bell Avenue? Yeah. Okay, this is not. This is not part of the hearings that we're discussing right now. Okay. If you'd like to come up though at the next council meeting, you could speak sure. at the public forum. That would be wonderful. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council on those four hearings? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? There being no more, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the hearings be closed. There's a motion to close hearings. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. <coughs> Alderman Berg. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. What I'd like to do now is uh, pull 2064 from the Marina and Harbor Committee. Uh, that's uh, the document that deals with uh, Establish a contingency lease between the city and the Winsa Group uh, related to the USS Edson. I'd also uh, like to move to open the floor to Captain Caswell and uh, uh, his assorted uh, group should any questions uh, come from council floor. Uh, 
Um, I think we need a motion to either accept and adopt or first yeah. before. I would move to uh, accept the report of committee and put the resolution as passage. On the substitute There's resolution. Substitute resolution. There's Thank a motion you. and a second. Okay, under discussion. Uh, good. Uh, yes, no. under discussion, uh, um, we've, I think, had a, two input sessions um, and uh, a very active group tonight. I think uh, it's of interest that when you polled uh, the individuals who were there, no one came out as being patently op uh, opposed to the Edson being docked. Uh, if there were issues that were uh, brought forward, it was more a matter of not all questions had been answered at this time. And I think a reasonable portion of the group that also felt that uh, time was somewhat of the essence so that uh, we should move ahead with the lease. Uh, passage at this time essentially uh, takes the form of a handshake between Winsa and the city. It does not bind Winsa to produce a boat in the harbor by a certain time, nor does it bind the city unconditionally to take it or leave it. Terms of the lease will negotiate many of those areas uh, yet to be uh, determined. Uh, from listening to the line of questioning, it appeared that many of the questions were valid but could not legitimately be answered because that would require uh, Winsa to spend money and uh, they are reluctant to spend money unless they have some kind of assurance that we are involved in a process of negotiation. Uh, I guess if I were to characterize this, it's like negotiating a prenuptial uh, relationship, uh, a prenuptial agreement. Our ability to uh, negotiate successfully the prenuptial agreement may or may not end up in a marriage. And I think to some degree that's the state at which we're at. Uh, a lot of comments were had. Uh, I think uh, the comments that I've received, some of them were answerable. I think you find that people who are for it uh, look to the economic benefit that we will enjoy from tourism. Uh, the individuals who are in the middle are really looking for more information and the people that, that called were against it have, I think, a concern I really can't answer. A lot of people think old naval vessels are just ugly. And I don't think there's much of anything that we can do to deal with that perception of something being ugly or not. Uh, but with that in mind, uh, the feeling of the committee was to recommend it to the council for passage. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen Byrne. Alderman Segali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for the comment on you uh, old naval ships looking ugly. I have to say again that um, I got the opportunity to look at the Turner Joy in Remington, Washington. Let me tell you, that ship was gorgeous. I mean, that was just such an eye-opener when you went down to their lakefront and that ship was there. If you couldn't be more prouder of being an American, of being in the United States of America, and of the United States Navy, let me tell you, there's nothing like it. That ship was absolutely beautiful. And I think that the Edson will be just as beautiful in the city of Sheboygan. That's just how I feel. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Segali. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that we refer these documents to the Plan Commission, the Redevelopment Authority, Transit and Finance, uh, so we can study these a little bit more. I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying no. Two weeks is not going to stall the process that much. It's just a matter of there's, there's much more information that I'd like to know. Will this fit into the plans of the South Pier District? I mean, those are the answers that would come from those authorities across the street. Okay, excuse me. Is there a second to that? Okay. Uh, excuse me, Alderman Racky, could you please list the committees again for me uh, a little redevelopment, slower? Redevelopment, planning, transit, and finance. Thank you. And the reasoning being transit could take a look at the parking issues down there. There's 80 parking stalls down there in the circle. And those parking stalls in the summertime are many times filled up with fishermen that come to Sheboygan with the same thing in mind from out of the city to stay here, spend their dollars here, and go fishing here off the South Break Wall. Uh, now we have to take a look at where's the nearest public parking lot, which is three blocks away from that. How is that going to impact? They're talking about trolley service and things. Let's take a look at that. What's, the, uh, what's going to happen there? Would transit need to start running extra buses and things down there? These are all questions that need to be answered before I think we should start entering into any type of agreement to go any further with this until we know are we prepared to take something like this on? Thank you. Thank you. 
Just as a reminder, the motion to refer takes precedence. It is debatable, requires a majority vote. Alderman <coughs> Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> the only thing we're doing tonight is <coughs> giving permission to start negotiating. Now, the, the hands of the council aren't tied that if during the negotiations, it doesn't look good for the city, we just stop negotiations. And uh, Alderman Ratke was talking about maybe the depth of the harbor and things like that. Uh, one thing during negotiations, if they could maybe bring up the idea of making, uh, moving that uh, ship over to the North Pier where the water is deeper, where you wouldn't have to worry about dredging at all. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Burt. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as was pointed out, what, what this document asks for is um, permission to, to start negotiating, to uh, be able to, um, with WINSA, accomplish, or having uh, WINSA accop accomplish the following, completing a successful feasibility study of the Sheboygan site, securing all requirement governmental approvals, and raising all required funds to do this. Now, we can still send this document back to those various committees, but I think tonight we have to give the go ahead to this group to look at these things and to start their planning. Because as many of you read in the paper, there is another community looking at this. And if this community gets the approval, there's a time frame of six months, which we, the city of Sheboygan, if we want to still do anything with this, and if WINSA still wants to do something with it, they have six months to look at this and do whatever they need to in order to get this ship here. If you don't want the ship here, then, then don't vote for this. But uh, I think the majority of us want the ship here, and I think we need to take a baby step forward, as many times we talk about, and, um, and start this negotiation. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Susha. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm part of the Marina Committee, and the Winsa Group, I believe, first approached the Marina Committee, I believe it was last August. So we've heard multiple presentations from this organization in regards to bringing the boat in. And I think one of the key pieces of information that they failed to convey to us up until very recently was how close this other city in Michigan, the Saginaw slash Bay City area, how close they are to actually securing their boat. Um, they have been working on bringing a boat to that area for the past nine years. And um, they are one signature away from, from the Navy. The Navy just has to sign off on this. And then um, that will give a six month window where any other city in the country that would be interested in docking this boat, they can submit an application. And um, they're just one signature away. We don't have council approval. We don't have DNR approval. We don't have a lot of approvals they're missing. And my concern here is that, number one, that they weren't honest and truthful and upfront. Um, I don't like this because I feel that we're at a point now where it's being, hurry up, rush it through. It's kind of being shoved down our throat like we must move on because we're in competition. And that's the word that was used in the written definition from this group is that we are in competition with Saginaw for this particular vessel. Now, in their defense, they have a maritime museum and they have a history of a community. They have five companies uh, in the past that have built boats of this nature. So you can see that it would be a nice fit for them to have this type of vessel docked um, in their city. And the way it looks to me is that we're trying to steal this away from them. And I, I don't think that's fair um, for, for us to do that to them because they've worked on this actually longer than we are. I, if we're going to bring a vessel in, I think that perhaps it should be a different one. Um, the purpose of passing this resolution, and this was brought up in the Marina Committee tonight, was it's, there was a situation given where if we give them the green light tonight and they meet all of the um, parameters that are listed, and they are pretty restrictive parameters that they have to uh, meet, and then it comes back to the committee, and then at that time if we say, no, we're not interested, well, now we've wasted a lot of their time, a lot of our time, and a lot of their money that they have to raise. So really, the question on this, there is a lot of weight on this resolution that's in front of us. And the question really is, is are we seriously interested in this project? And I, I have to agree with Alderman Radke that this needs to be referred to the Redevelopment Authority because one of the things that came out of today's meeting is that at parts of this boat are going to be six stories high. And if somebody came to the Redevelopment Authority and said, I want to build a structure that's going to be, you know, three, four, five, six stories high right along the South Pier and I want it to run for 400 feet, 
Do you think that's a good idea? I have a feeling the redevelopment authority would probably shoot them down saying that's not in their master plan. I mean, six stories, I mean, that's as big as the, the largest skyscraper we have in town. And now you're going to put it right on the lakefront and obstruct the view from a lot of constituents in my district who have been calling and saying that they don't want this. So that is a, a definite concern of mine. Um, a couple other things uh, that came up that don't quite add up. Uh, one of them being the 80,000 uh, tourists that they believe they can track, attract. Um, they will only be open primarily full time during the, during the um, summer months and um, then only weekends probably during the winter months. And when you look at you know, an eight hour day, how many tourists would that be? Um, I was doing some math and I come up with the projection of 336 tourists a day, which would be 42 people an hour for every single hour of the year that they would be open. And um, as we were just talking about the limited number of parking spots that are in that circular area at the end of South Pier, you know, I am concerned about the fishermen, the people that actually are paying the taxes in this community. How, where are they going to park and things like that? Well, the answer that we're being given is that um, the Windsor Group would shuttle people from the remote lots that are on the South Pier and shuttle them over so they can tour the boat. Well, my question is, is what if the fishermen want to go fishing and they've got all their gear and their fishing rods? You know, are we supposed to tell them to go park in a remote lot to get on a shuttle bus so then they can be shuttled to the South Pier so they can go fishing? And then vice versa, what happens with all the dead fish that they want to take on the shuttle? I mean, some of these ideas just are not meshing. And um, I, I think that we need to send this to uh, parking and transit so they can seriously look at the parking issues down there and if this would be a feasible, feasible situation. Because if we have issues with the parking or with the height of this vessel, we need to give them this information. We can't just green stamp this because they're talking about raising about $125,000 to $200,000 just to get this initial process rolling. And it's not fair to them to mislead them. And by postponing it two weeks just so we can gather a little more information, um, I don't think it's going to hurt anybody unless um, we're trying to just, you know, jam this down the throats of the citizens, and I don't think that's what we are intending on doing. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, <coughs> Alderman Berg, E. Berg. Yes, this is on uh, the uh, uh, motion <coughs> to refer. Uh, personally, I think it's a good idea now. I think it will probably continue to be a good idea in two weeks. Uh, and I am amazed at your optimism that in government things like this can be done in two weeks. Uh, I, the problem I have is how long do we keep, uh, if you would, pu pushing things like this off? And you can, I, I think we can look to have assurances for the protection of the city and the taxpayers. What you've asked for can certainly be done and should be done and needs to be done as part of the agreement. Anytime we do a development uh, agreement, we certainly will be talking to redevelopment authority. In order to answer many of the questions, my expectation is that the WINSA group will not have the answers on the tip of their fingers. They will have to go to the marketplace and pay for those kinds of answers. I think they made the point that in order for them to begin fundraising, they at least need to have the decision of this council to begin the negotiation processes. So I think uh, if we begin negotiations, I think that, uh, again, uh, we can put in those kinds of safeguards that will protect the city and allow the process to go forward through the governmental uh, approval authority. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Straub. Thank you, Honor. Um, again, regarding the... Uh, the uh, motion to send this to the four committees. Um, if you look at the document, there again it says completing a successful feasibility study. Feasibility study, part of that is talking to the various committees and getting the various government approvals. We, the city of Sheboygan, the common council here, the mayor's office and so forth, are the government. They have to get our approval for this too. So some of that can be done while we're negotiating this contract. So I will not support sending it to various <coughs> committees until after we get it approved. Thank you, Alderman Grove. Alderman Ratke, second time on referral. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, maybe Attorney McLean, you can explain this to me maybe a little bit better. It sounds to me like what we're doing here is we're opening up and saying, go for it, feasibility study, you've got to do it. What about a feasibility study for the city of Sheboygan? All too often this city and this councils 
have said to the people, we're going to do this and we don't care. That's happened too often. Then we said, no, we're not going to do things. What's two weeks going to hurt anybody? And during that two-week period, is it possible if we pass this ordinance, can we still negotiate while well, the committees have these in hand to take a look at this? The committees are there to do our homework. We're not here in this council floor to do the work here tonight. The committees are set up to do that work just you know, so none of us have to go to all these different places and get these answers. They all have their areas of expertise to report back to us. So why not let them have their shot? And can you negotiate while they're doing that, Attorney McLean? Attorney McLean? I, I believe the, uh, the intent here is the way I read it, the result of the negotiations will be at least subject to accomplishing the following. So uh, we're talking about authorizing negotiations, uh, which, you know, there's a lot of issues that I see, you know, if. If I draft a lease, I want to know what, what the term of the lease is, how long it is, what the costs are. You know, there's a lot of things that aren't addressed here that will need to be addressed, but that's what the document is authorizing is the start of that process, uh, not the end of the process. Um, it authorizes negotiations. The result will be a lease that, uh, in the be it further resolved, says any agreement negotiated is contingent upon approval by the Common Council. So uh, this, this lease that's negotiated would be a draft that would have to come back to the Council and through the Council process to get approved. Uh, that approval there is, is, and that lease is still going to be subject to uh, this group accomplishing all the require, uh, raising the required funds and so forth. So uh, I see it as still a pretty long way out before both parties are to the point where we've got a lease that no longer has any contingencies. Uh, so you know, I, I think it's up to the council, obviously, uh, as to how you want to proceed with the process. Um, and I. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Over well, the this, this uh, piece of paper in front of us says, the result of the negotiations will be at least subject to Windsor accomplishing the following, completing a, a successful feasibility study, securing all required government approvals, raising all required funds. There's nothing in here about the city side of it. So can we amend this to say uh, also uh, the city accomplishing the approval of all the various committees needed to, so we have ourselves and out of this, they have a feasibility study. If it doesn't work out, they're out, but there's nothing here that says the city can't get out of it. Uh, well, if you're asking me the question, this does not authorize someone to sign any, anything. This doesn't sign, authorize a lease to be executed. It just authorizes a lease to be negotiated and drafted and brought back to the council. Uh, that how, can we, uh, how can we negotiate a lease with a group of people when we ourselves don't have all the answers to this thing? And this gives them an easy out if they're, they're successful, they don't successfully complete a feasibility study. That's for them. What about us? There's nothing in here that addresses the city of Sheboygan. What can we put in here that would address the city of Sheboygan's interest in this negotiation? Uh, well, you could put anything you want in here. You could put that uh, the result of the negotiation will be a five-year lease, be a 10-year lease, be a 100-year lease. It'll be uh, uh, no cost to the city. There's, there's a lot of things you could put in here um, if that's what the council wishes to do. I'd like to see something in here that, that allows the city, if it's not feasible on our end after these four committees I'd like it to go to, says this is not a good fit for the city, that we can just cut the whole project right there. That's what I'm looking for. Because they have an easy out again. We have nothing in here. Do you want to have a point of order? Uh -huh. we're, we're, we're getting to that, yes. <coughs> Referrals, amendable. Yes, it is. Referral is amendable. Your point of order? My oh. point of order relates to, I, I didn't read the document that closely, and I just pulled the minutes of the uh, Marina Committee. I would add that the Marina Committee minutes from uh, January 4th uh, are, have not been approved by the Marina Committee. But I think to address Alderman Radke's concerns, uh, I have a Renee Susha moved, John Rohde seconded that to amend the resolution as follows. A second, be it resolved to be added to read, 
be it further resolved, any agreement negotiated is contingent upon approval by the Common Council. That motion passed unanimously. And somewhere in the typing, that did not. Uh, it's in the it's, oh, it is. It is? Oh, oh, yes. It's okay. the last, be it further resolved, Alderman Berg. Thank you, Alderman Berg. We've got uh, Alderman Recky, where you're done, sir? Yes, sir. That was second time on the referral. We have Alderman Susha next. Second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just forgot to mention before in regards to why this should be uh, sent over to the Finance Committee. You know, we always say that this is coming in and there won't be any cost to the city. Well, there was a cost identified and the question went unanswered at the public input session. Um, right now we're trying to authorize that there be an attorney involved in drafting a lease. And the question came up, who will pay the attorney fees for the lease that's going to be negotiated? Um, if you remember the Blue Harbor situation, we wound up with a bill of approximately $350,000. And um, I think this is something that we need to look at um, before we move ahead because um, we can't be spending money when we're told that this is going to cost us nothing. That means zero. So I think we need to toe the line on this one. And um, that's why I think it should be referred uh, to finance uh, for discussion of how we're going to pay for the, the lease. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Graff. Thank you, and I was just going to follow up on the point of order from Alderman Berg uh, regarding the substitute of the resolution, which is what we're acting on, which is asked to be referred, excuse me, right now, has the bottom line in there of any agreement negotiated is contingent upon approval by the Common Council. So it's in there what um, Alderman Matthew was looking at. Well, that, that point addresses his concern that the city wasn't being involved, but the referral, the motion to refer still stands. And I, I was, if we're going to call the, the roll, I'd just like to say that I, I took the approach with this venture uh, as a neutral person. I wasn't either for it and I wasn't either against it. I was willing to give everybody the opportunity to have their say so. I don't feel everybody had, has had the opportunity to have their say so. I did not realize that this thing was going to come to a head on and say well, you need to approve it tonight to move on. That turns me off. We've made mistakes before when we rush through things and it comes back and bites us. And that's the only thing that I'm concerned about is that perhaps we're rushing through things a little bit too fast. And when that happens, they just stop, slow down, take another look at it. If the council wants to proceed, you're free to do that. I will not support that. But if you want to do that, you can do so by a majority vote. But you're not going to have my vote. I'll tell you that. Please call the roll. For referral only. This is referral to the four and, committees. Yes. Yes. Okay. Please. Okay. I'm sorry. This vote is not. Sir, this, you, Alderman, you need to ask for the floor. Are you asking for the floor? Where to take a, a vote? Yeah, Alderman Burke. Did you need just, a clarification? Just ex explain. All we're voting on now. right now is we're voting on the referral, the motion to refer to city plan, redevelopment, finance, and transit. That's what we're voting on right now. And I vote would be to refer. Okay. Right. Bauman. No. <clears throat> Deberg. No. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. No. Graf. No. Kittleson. No. Manny. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stefan. No. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. I'm sorry. No. Thank you. And Vanderweel. No. <clears throat> Four eyes, 12 no's. Motion fails. The motion on the floor now is to put the resolution upon its passage and pass a substitute resolution. Was there any further discussion on that? Otherwise, we will call the roll. <clears throat> this is to pass the substitute resolution. Deberg. <clears throat> excuse me. Eberg. Too late. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, no. Montemayor, no. Radke, no. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, no. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 12 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. Going back to consent agenda, items 20 through 1, 20-1 20 to 2024. 20, Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that. All those ROs in 20-1 20, 20 to 20-24 be accepted and placed on file. All the RCs be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolutions and the general ordinance. 
Is there a second? Second. Motion being made and seconded. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like 20 Zero three to be pulled and referred to law and licensing committee, please. That's fine. We will do that, Alderman. Thank you very much. Thank Anything you. else? Okay. That will be items 20-1, uh, 20-24, except 20-3, referred back. Please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Radke. Sagali, aye. Stefan, aye. Susha, aye. Van Akron, aye. Vanderweel, aye. Bauman, and Deberg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2025 through 2027 to be referred. <coughs> Report of Officers 2, 2028 through 2044 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 2045 by Alderman Bauman authorizing the Mayor's International Committee to apply for and obtain a temporary restaurant permit for the committee sponsored Taste of Sheboygan County scheduled for March 5th, 206 at the Armory. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, sir? Under discussion, Your Honor, we do recoup 100% of this license fee. And it is from the participating vendors that anyone wishes to know. Any further discussion? There will be a none. Please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Stefan, Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, and Eberg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2046 by Alderman Bauman authorizing and executing an agreement with the American Transmission Company, LLC, for relocation of certain ut utility facilities. Alderman Bauman, we need a, res a motion to suspend for us. Thank you again, Your Honor. I'd move for suspension of the rules, please. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Otherwise, we'll take a vote. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Please proceed. I thank you again. Uh, I move then that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If Alderman Bauman just could explain a little bit what this is concerning relocation of certain utility facilities, if we could just have some type of explanation. Alderman Bauman, can you or should we ask somebody else, the department head or anything like that? Well, I see Tom's looking at me. So. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Holton, would you please address the council? Thank you. That's for our relocating a power pole on Washington Avenue and Green Wing Drive as part of the Walmart project, and that's the funds. Walmart is reimbursing us for this work. The transportation can only go do an agreement with us, then we go back to Walmart then to get reimbursed. Any other questions for Mr. Holton? Thank you. Please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2047 by Alderman Montemayor authorizing and accepting the offer to purchase an addendum on the butane side of North Avenue and Main Avenue, Alderman Montemayor. We need a motion to suspend first. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I need a motion to, I mean, I'm making a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Please proceed. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion to second. Put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Serta, and Davis. Aye. 
16 ayes. Motion carries. 2048 through 2052 lies over except 2051. I'd ask for a motion to suspend and a motion to put the uh, resolution upon its passage. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move for suspension. Second. There's a motion second to suspend. All, any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Please proceed. And Your Honor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second under discussion, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, um, the reason this is being done is because uh, this is for the purchase of the, the canine dog and the training for it will start shortly and therefore we, we need to move this through as quickly as possible. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Susha. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I understand that the dog is going to cost um, $6,400 and that would leave about $8,600 left uh, to train the handler. And I'm wondering if perhaps Chief Kirk could explain what that $8,400 would include exactly, how much is used for room and board, because um, that seems like an awful lot. I believe it's only two weeks of training. Would you like for me to call Chief Kirk to the podium, please? Yes. Chief Kirk, would you please address us, sir. Did you the, understand uh, the question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. The uh, $6,400 includes the dog, the handler's fee, the hotel, and things of that nature. The uh, request for the $15,000 was to make sure, to ensure that the dollars were there so that uh, when the, the purchase was made that we didn't have to come back and, and ask for additional money. Uh, any additional dollars that are left will be used uh, for additional expenses and whatever is left will certainly be uh, justified and returned. Follow-up question that you're on. Um, please, could you be please a, little, rise, please rise. a little more specific, please? I mean, that's $8,000. I mean, what could you be a little more specific on what that's for? No, we asked for $15,000. The expenses are $6,400 we found. We did not know what the expenses were when we made the initial request. Um, and it, Lieutenant Jeff Johnson was the one who dealt with the canine school, and um, that's what the, the expenses are, $6,400. And whatever's left will be put to good sure. use. You bet. Alderman Ratke. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. So Chief Kirk is telling us the expense here is $6,400 is what you're telling us? Yes. OK. Then why don't we amend this to $6,400? I mean, because there's no reason to go for $15,000 when the cost is $6,400. Oh, Alderman Ratke, I, I, under discussion, I would ask not to do that. Let the chief take care of the training uh, Whatever is left over, I'm sure that the chief will use very wisely. We don't want to restrict the chief to a specific amount and find out he's short somewhere else. Uh, I would, I would ask, please, please don't. Anything else? Thank you, chief. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 14 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 2053 to 2056 to be referred. Reporter Committee 6. 2057 by finance recommended filing documents submitting a communication from Carol and Randy Lutz, co-directors of the Rockets for Schools, requesting the use of three of the city's days allocated at the Blue Harbor Conference Center for use during their program on May 11th through the 13th, 06, and approving the request. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be, a, <clears throat> excuse me, be accepted and adopted. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt <coughs> the art reported committee under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2058 by Public Protection and Safety recommended filing documents submitting a communication from Job Jose regarding issues with the police department in dealing with an accident that happened at the crosswalk of North 25th Street and Core Memorial Drive 
when his father was hit by a vehicle while in the crosswalk and stating that the committee is unable to handle the situation. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the communication be placed, be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion to, to accept and adopt under discussion. There be a none. Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 2059 to be referred. Report of committees, eight. 2060 by Public Works recommended establishing Eisner Avenue as a priority capital improvement project in 07. Alderman Bauman. Again, thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that uh, document number 20-60 be accepted and adopted and the report of committee be put upon its passage. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. 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 Under discussion? Alderman Eberg. Yes, thank you again, Your Honor. Uh, under discussion. Uh, um, this is, uh, I, I ask that this be uh, pulled from consent uh, for a couple of reasons. One, to let the neighbors along Eisner Avenue know that they haven't been forgotten, uh, and also to highlight a couple of things, that uh, we talk about intergovernmental cooperation, and I think this represents a model of that. Uh, thanks to Dan Hine and the town supervisors in the town of Sheboygan, uh, they have been very supportive of this. Supervisor Connie Gilligan, who represents that area, has been working to see if we can utilize some trail money to connect the Pigeon River corridor with the Lakefront tr uh, Trail, and also uh, State Senator Joe Liveham had in the past some budgeted money to assist in the development of Eisner Avenue. So although we cannot legitimately bind uh, the Capital Improvements Program uh, uh, c Commission to approve this, uh, I wanted to have this come forward and be on record that this be a top priority project for 2007. Uh, number one, to inform the neighbors in the Eisner Avenue area, but also to provide copies of this resolution to the town board and to the county and also to the state in the hope that we will be able to put something together and leverage our joint dollars to minimize uh, the cost to all the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Byrd. Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first, having served on the county board, I think uh, Supervisor Connie Ziegelbauer would appreciate your thoughts, uh, not Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just guess that was my question. We're, we're calling this a priority. Having said on capital improvements, does that mean we're directing the staff to, you know, they market their priorities one through five? Are we directing the capital improvements committee? Or are we just telling them, yeah, we think it's important, but it doesn't really say, you know, my copy doesn't say top priority. It just says as a, as a priority capital improvement project. And I, I just wonder, is there any, I mean, we're just stating that it's like a feel-good thing, but we're not really, there's no actual direction in this. Am I correct in that? My understanding would be, Alderman Stephan, that there is no actual direction. The capital improvements does have a rating system. This is uh, an extent of, uh, extent of support, I believe, for, for that project. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, are you saying that the county and that is involved in the project in Iser Avenue? Because then if this is what is happening, what is happening to the project that's supposed to take place on Whedon Creek and OK? Um, there, there is supposed to be monies there, et cetera, et cetera. Now all of a sudden Eisner Avenue has become a priority. Would you like for Alderman Burke to respond yes, to that? Yes, please. Thank you. Alderman E. Burke. Alderman Sagali, I shudder to even predict the action of this body, much less the county board, uh, so I really can't, uh, I can't say. I do know that discussion has taken place between, on the staff level, between Shad and Hayden and, uh, and uh, Tom Holton to look to put together uh, uh, the Eisner Avenue corridor as being eligible for some staff for some of the trail money that is coming our way. And that comes with the support and encouragement of Supervisor Connie Ziegelbauer. Uh, I can't speak to any other project, but in terms of this particular project, that represents, from what I understand, the preliminary work that has uh, been going on. Also, that uh, as part of a plan, I understand that the engineering work is already being done uh, for Eisner Avenue in terms of looking at costing out some of the options and doing some of the basic design work. Thank you, Alderman Bird. Alderman Segali, does it address your concern? 
So so I guess it will. Okay. Thank you. Then we will uh, call a roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. We have items 2061 through 63 by Finance Committee authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 05 budget. Alderman McGraw, would you like to take all those three? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that and, and 2065 also, mm -hmm. yes. which is also a transfer of, of funds in the, um, in the 2005 budget. I would move that all RCs be accepted and, and adopted and all the resolutions be put upon their passage. There's, there's a motion and a second to accept and adopt all the reporter committees and that the resolutions be put upon their passage. That includes 2061, 2062, 2063, and 2065. Is there any discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 2063 um, relates to an anonymous donation of $5,050 uh, for police taser guns. Um, I'm strongly opposed to taser guns, um, but I will support this because if the city is going to buy taser guns, I'd rather see the money come from a private individual rather than from the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, and Montemayor. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 2066 through 2067 lies over. 2068 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1936. RO number 4750506, submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Press stating that it, as a public service to extend important civic information to citizens in Sheboygan, they will begin to post all our legal notices to an aggreg aggregated state website at no cost to the city. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and filed. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and file. Under discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1937, oral number 4760506 oh, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Fred and Muriel Cross, thanking Elder Person Meyer for her effort at, for her efforts as their older person. Alderman Meyer, motion to accept and file. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> There's a motion to accept and file. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 19-40, resolution number 220-0506 by Alderman Berg, requesting that the Mead Library Board of Trustees move to reopen contract negotiations with the director of Mead Public Library. Alderman E. Berg. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under the discussion. I think we've talked a good deal about the uh, library contract. Uh, before I developed this resolution, I had the opportunity to speak with several of the library board members on both sides of the issue. Also uh, met with library director Sharon uh, Winkle and Mayor Perez. And I guess uh, the reason that I developed the resolution is at that time I felt optimistic that uh, the contract was a key issue that could be revisited. Uh, and uh, history, I guess if we look back, has proved my optimism correct. And I would hope that uh, uh, we continue to encourage the library board to uh, sit with the library director and, and revisit the contract. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. I will add that Alderman Eberg did play a, a part, and I thank you for that, for the uh, candid discussions and talking about the possibility of handling this serious uh, situation uh, a little differently. So thank you, Alderman Berg. Any further discussion? Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. 
I guess all I heard was a motion to approve the resolution. Is that what we're voting There's on? There's a motion to uh, pass the resolution, yes. Um, I guess I would, you know, I, I question that. I think you guys have already done that. You've gone back to the, and renegotiated, and it seems like the majority of the people are happy, present company excluded. Um, I don't see a need for this, you know, and I guess I just moved to file. I think it's already been done. I think, like you said, it was a successful renegotiation. Everybody gave a little, took a little, and I mean, I know there's people in the community that still aren't happy with the salary, but you know, that, that's just the way it is. I mean, you know, I'm sure they're not going to be happy when the, you know other salaries come up. But is there a second to the motion to file? Second. There's a second. Any discussion on the file? There being none, please call the roll. Sagali. Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. D. Berg? No. E. Berg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Kittleson? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? No. Four eyes, 12 noes. Motion fails. Going back to the original motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Alderman Groff, do you have discussion on that, sir? Right. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, I, I don't know if it's all been renegotiated and so forth. And one, one thing that has to happen is the library board has got to open this up and correct that contract and, uh, and send it back to us for approval. That's correct, Alderman Groff. The meeting hasn't occurred yet. Alderman Seva. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess the last time we spoke concerning this matter, I was under the impression that we were still waiting for some feedback from the League of Municipalities. And if we're still pursuing those means and the Attorney General, that we still might get more information concerning this contract. And it could be a, a teaching tool in the future. Thank you, Alderman Seva. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Stefan. Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Sigali? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes. 1931, General Ordinance Number 730506 by Alderman Berg, reestablishing the salary for the position of all the persons of the City of Sheboygan. Alderman E. Berg. Uh, yes, I would move that the uh, ordinance be placed upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, basically the ordinance uh, mirrors the previous discussion of the council and establishes the council of, or the um, uh, salary for Alderman to 2008 for $4,000. Uh, $668, which is what it currently is, and I guess as a personal testament, I'd, I've been doing this for nine months, and it's the best darn low-paying job in the city. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Burry. Alderman Susha. Thank you, and I agree with Alderman <coughs> Alderman Berg. Um, I would like to um, amend this document um, so that in 2008 the aldermanic pay is 5100 and in 2007 the aldermanic pay is $5,000. Is there a second? Second. There's a second under discussion. Thank you. Um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at um, the document that Salary and Grievance, I believe, used when they were analyzing the city attorney and the city clerk's um, salary. And I use the same methodology, I believe, that um, the chairman of salary and grievance used. And I looked at um, all of the, the cities, 15 cities that pay their aldermen, and I added it up and I divided it by 15, and I found that the average for cities of similar size to Sheboygan, in 2005, the average pay for an alderman was $5,100. And I'm not saying that today we should be making the average. I'm saying that in 2008, the aldermen that are elected at that point in time, which is most likely not going to be any of us that are even here today, that they be brought up to what the aldermen in other communities are averaging in their pay today. So that's why I'm saying that in 2008, uh, aldermen should be paid $5,100, and in 2007, it should be 5000 
And then um, next year it'll continue to the same rate that it's been at for <coughs> the last um, number of years, which is 4,668. Thank you. Any further discussion? On the amendment, would you please call the roll? Uh, and let me just clarify, Alderman <clears throat> Susha, uh, 2008 would be 5,100, and 2007 would be 5,000, and 2006 is already set at, two, at 4, 6, 6, 8. Okay. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. No. Graf. No. Kittleson. No. Manny. Mm -hmm. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Montemayor. Yes. Radke. Aye. Sigali. No. And Stefan. No. Five ayes, 11 noes. Motion fails. Going back to the original motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Van Akron. No. I am. <laughs> 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 okay. That's because you're not going to be here. That's why you're going to run. <laughs> you can put it now. So that was an I. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. E wait, wait, wait. Aye. One berg at a time. <laughs> Eberg. <Aye>. Serta. <laughs> Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, no. Montemayor. Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. and Susha. No. 14 ayes, two noes. Motion carries. 1818, resolution number 462506 by the City Plan Commission, NX and Territory from the Town of Wilson to the City of Sheboygan, situated between. South Business Drive and Manning Drive. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the report of officer and pass the resolution 2050506 and ordinance 670506. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. <coughs> Under discussion, Your Honor, I'd like to make an amendment. I'd like to amend to add the following, section five, in accordance with section 66 Point zero two one seven fourteen of the Wisconsin statutes, the city of Sheboygan hereby agrees to pay annually to the town of Wilson for five years an amount equal to the amount of property taxes that the town of Wilson levied on the annexed territory described in section one above. As shown by the tax roll under section 70.65 of the Wisconsin statutes in the year in which the annexation is final. I think this is a legality we have to add to this. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Under discussion? It is by statute that we have to do that. Any, any discussion on the amendment only? Please call the roll. Vanderweel, Aye. this is on the amendment. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Groff, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. and Van Akron. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion amendment passes. Now I need a motion to put accept and file as amended. There's a motion and second under discussion. Please call the roll. Bauman. Deberg. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, <coughs> Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. and Vanderweel. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2069 and RO by the city clerk submitting a private <clears throat> well permit application for David Carey's 1628 North 36th Street. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Alderman Graff. I would move that we accept and file the RO. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
There being none, all those in favor state aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2070 will be referred to City Plan Commission. 2071 to be referred to City Plan Commission. 2072, an RC by Public Protection and Safety recommended amending the two hour parking limit so as to delete two hour limits along the north side of Indiana Avenue from South 16th Street west to the existing no parking zone. That zone remains for the right turn straight lane at North 17th Street and pass the substitute ordinance. Alderman Susha. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. And substitute ordinance be passed? Yes. And there's a second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Bauman. 16 eyes. Motion carries. 2073 lies over. 2074 will be referred to risk management. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 2075 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget. That lies over. 2076 is an ordinance relating to adding various no parking between driveway signs along the south side of Washington Avenue west from the west curb line of South 12th Street. That lies over. 2077 is an ordinance relating to adding a no parking to driveway sign along the south side of Washington Avenue west from the west curb line of South 12th Street. And that lies over. 2078 is an ordinance relating to adding a no parking anytime sign along the south side of Washington Avenue west from the west curb line of South 12th Street. That also lies over. 2079 is an ordinance relating to adding no parking between driveway signs along the west side of North 10th Street, north from the north curb line of School Avenue and various locations. Lies over. 2080 is an ordinance relating to adding a no parking south to driveway sign along the west side of North 10th Street, north from the north curb line of School Avenue with the arrow pointing south 170 feet north from School Avenue. That lies over. 2081 is an ordinance relating to adding a right turn only sign along the east curb line of North 10th Street between the sidewalk and curb 85 feet north of the north curb line of School Avenue extended. Right turn only sign facing west to driveway exit. That lies over also. 2082 is an ordinance relating to adding a right turn only sign along the west side of North 10th Street north from the north curb line of School Avenue between the sidewalk and curb facing the parking lot 72 feet north from School Avenue. That lies over. <coughs> 2083 is an ordinance relating to adding various no parking anytime signs along the west side of North 10th Street, north from the north curb line of School Avenue at various locations. That lies over. 2084 is a communication from Carter Paulus regarding issues with accountability and fiscal responsibility of the Library Board of Trustees. That lies over. 2085 is a communication from Alderperson Serta regarding the reopening of North 21st Street. That lies over. There's a motion to second. All those in favor state aye. aye. Motion carried. Stand adjourned.